Professor Brain Brown's research shows that vulnerability fosters good emotional and mental health. It is a sign of courage. We become more resilient and brave when we embrace who we truly are and what we are feeling. The Vulnerable Scientist Podcast is a space for scientists to tell their honest and authentic stories. I am your host, Sarah Nyakeri, who happens to be a scientist, informal science communicator, and I help scientists create personal websites. If you want to support this show, go to www.patreon.com slash the vulnerable scientist. You can also follow this podcast on all social media platforms at TV Scientist Pod. Let's talk about the highs. Ah, I thought we'd covered all the highs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't what highs. I don't remember any of the highs. Uh, Are there other highs that you didn't talk about? Ah, uh, what would be a high? Highs would be when I, you know, got a, got um, offered jobs. I guess. Uh, yeah. Hi, no, uh, yeah, maybe little highs when you know you're. When a when a when an when a script works, oh, that's a big high. Mm. And you've struggled for ages trying to uh, dis- to 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 write a pipeline and then debug it. Mm. And when it finally runs, uh, <laughs> those are minor wins, but they are definite. They feel like big wins. Um, um, but career wise. Mm, I was, I was, I'd say, getting that uh, postdoc position at Kemri mm. Kilifi was a, a big high for me. Mm. I was really, really um, excited about that opportunity, and I would love to go back and work, um, work in that environment. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm in a diff, yeah, human health here as well mm. in my current position, but mm. not so. Um, well, different setting, right? Mm. <laughs> it can't beat uh, the Kenyan coast. Ah, the Kenyan that, coast. So <laughs> it's not the research, really. <laughs> the research, the research, the research was there. The the the, the coast is a perk <laughs> uh. <laughs> to be in a, in a, yeah in Kilifi was a per- the, the environment was a perk, but the research itself was also definitely. I mean, that's what took me there. And would have mm. kept me there. Mm. 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 Okay. So, um, you were brought up in Coast. Um, mm-hmm. Then you move to UK. Then you come back to Kenya. Then you briefly go to, was it before, after you go to Switzerland? Uh, in between, yeah. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then you also go to South Africa, right? For oh, you doing your... no. No, that was you only... Didn't. Yeah, I, I did. I did for my... Um, PhD. Thesis d- defense. Um, mm. I spent. I didn't spend any time studying oh, in South Africa. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. So um, the question here is, how different were those experiences, like in all these different places and now back to UK oh so different um so I noticed that the pace at which uh research gets done outside is slightly higher Mm. it's um maybe maybe it was uh, because it's the institutes that I was in. So in Switzerland, um, you know, I was in a in a kind of a in, in a facility, like they were um a service facility, sorry. So they mm. it's um so they, they would be working at a higher pace to um to meet the, the demands by the clients. But um um but what I did learn was was work ethic in in from these different places. They mm. they all every you know I found that in Europe people work hard and and play hard. I guess you can say that they, I mean, not that in Kenya people didn't work hard. Everybody everywhere people worked worked hard. Mm. Um, 
I just the the it's the pace that was very different. I found um, mm. uh, maybe you know it was because it just I I maybe it was just access to it access to the internet was fast, so you could access information really fast, and you could you just like get into this uh, way of doing I don't know this fast. Your mind tries to keep up with the pace that's around you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely, I mean, in, in the early days, uh, in, in my, um, career in Kenya, I de- I did notice like a big slowdown when the, with the internet, the internet speeds were, were not great mm. back then. They're, they're, they're great now, but mm. back then there weren't. And I could, you know, you'd type something, you'd, you'd, you'd search for something in, um, in a, in a web browser and you would, and it would take ages for the results to come back. And by then you have like, be annoying forgotten you know what what you've kind of you have to really stop and and try and, rem- and remember what, what you, you what were you doing searching for? <laughs> yeah oh my goodness yeah what must be have been annoying like oh my goodness <laughs> but the other thing was um which i i often laugh about is the difference between uh, uh public health hmm. scientists and um and agricultural scientists there's they're very different uh, what do you mean? there's the, the the public health scientists like who have a clinical background mm. so doc, doctors um and non-clinical uh background they're just it, it's very different the intensity um you know uh, th- th- is is different um and not in any any the, not in any bad way it's mm. just they 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 i think the training the clinical training really um uh i don't know uh, ingrains some certain characteristics and behaviors mm. um in 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 medics uh, you yeah um they're they're serious you know <laughs> Mm. Bangladesh issue is quite serious. Mm. <laughs> uh, maybe they have to be because of their training and mm. and uh, uh, life is serious. You know, it's life or death kind of seriousness. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was like it was a it was a bit of a culture shock moving from from agriculture to to public health mm. um, in in Kilifi. But um, yeah. Apart from all the all the other shocks, <laughs> what other shocks? <laughs> well, you know about working on human health and mm. being um, being uh, being confronted by the problem you're solving every day. Uh, mm. You know, it's um, yeah. Wow, interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I was wondering if or when talking about the highs and lows, um, mm. are there any are the highs and lows that have n- not close related to your career that you would like to talk about, but that have might have affected your career, or played a part or a role in your career progression? Um, it would have to be a high. I think um, mm. meeting my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- yeah, I mix- find myself. Uh, um, to be, I, I feel, I feel lucky to, to have met him and, um, he, you know, has, um, he's a very, very different personality to me, uh, different background, different upbringing, but he instilled, um, oh, he encouraged me to think about, um, things like, um, uh, forward planning, like, uh, or, you know, think about the, um, well, just planning, actually, what, what, where, what are you doing now? Mm. And how is it, um, how is it beneficial to where you want to be? Mm. Or what, where you want to go? Mm. So it, in, in practical terms, that would be something like um, learning skills. So why don't you learn? Um, why don't you learn uh, Python? You know, because it's um, it, well, he wouldn't suggest. He would, he would, we would have discussions, and he was like, "So, how are you? you? Know what, what kind of learning 
do you want to do? And he actually probably um in in probably in not uh, not um consciously but uh, he inf- he he has influenced my uh my take on or, or my my approach to to life a bit especially learning so mm. you know how do you you have to constantly be he he constantly reinvents himself and and keeps learning he he's always doing a course or learning a new skill and to be around somebody like that, you feel like, oh, okay, am I? I don't want to. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to stagnate. Um, and I want to learn new things. So he, um, I think he 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 has um, made me uh, realize or appreciate the joy of learning mm. and the joy of reading. So he's an avid reader, and he would he he would he will read a book in. In a week, you know, um, he's um, he he loves books and he has an in, incredible capacity to retain information, mm. um, which I don't. I haven't <laughs> that hasn't rubbed off, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, but but it's yeah, kind of information and reading and um, reading um, useful things or reading even for fun. Like, but but why? Like, choose choose how you spend your time. Mm. Um, choose what kind of television to watch, for example. What kind of movies do you want to watch? Mm. Um, don't, you know, just put on the TV and um, let two hours go by without you having benefited from anything from it. It's just, you know, just um, be constructive about how you use your time. Okay. Maybe. So my husband, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Meeting him has changed me <laughs> mm. for the good, I think. So, um, so what I'm seeing here is the people who you surround yourself with, especially closely, have an influence on how you progress your career, right? Because mm-hmm. you already mentioned even about networking and even uh, a friend who knew about Ilrizon, she's the one who actually introduced you to that, like made you know about it like that circle that you keep close. So while asking that question, do you think that your upbringing affected your your career choice in any way, like your parents or whatever people who were around you? At that yes, time? definitely. Mm. Yeah, my my mom studied microbiology, so I mentioned that she was um, Lab a research uh, technician in... Mm. Um, and she she did that for till quite late in her um till she retired so quite till quite recently mm. and my 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 dad um is a an engineer and he he loves he just loves science you know he um he loves anything engineering and physics and mm. and all that and he always um told us about the wonders of of physics when we were growing up um mm. but even um even biology and even health. So he's he's the type of person who um, who loves knowing about things, mostly technology. Actually, um, mm. um, and he's always like been interested in technology. tries uh, br- tries to bring in new technologies to his work or to his personal life. Uh, apart from mobile phone, he hasn't he hasn't got a smartphone yet. Wow! Um, but he's 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 <laughs> he's abstaining. Actually, he says mm. he doesn't. He doesn't trust himself with social media, mm. but uh, <laughs> um, but but otherwise, technology, uh, mechanical, let's just say, technology, oh, he's really okay. embraced, and computers, and he built his own computer. And, wow! Um, so he's he's very um, definitely he, that he has both of them have been a great influence, and, and not just them. Like I grew up in a joint family, so my uncles and my aunts and my cousins, and we all we all grew up in or well, stayed in the same house mm. there's a huge household mm. and we were we were very close um a close-knit family um so everybody um, and my my uncles were also very um science-minded and, and uh mostly physics actually so uh physics and mathematics so they that was science has been um yeah always been like um in in our blood and in our conversations and mm. and yeah it was I, I it's no wonder that i didn't think 
that I was going to do anything but science as mm. a as a career. So you didn't think of doing anything in the arts or pursuing a career out of science? Never. Nope. I um nope. As soon as I realized, I think that I needed to make a choice. I beelined for science and it was biology I was always just always interested in chemistry not really physics I really like physics and I wish I perhaps part of me thinks maybe if I had gone for physics I would have really I still enjoy physics but Mm. um I just felt more comfortable with biology yeah do you want to talk about child care and pursuing a career as a woman Oh, uh, we could, we could, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> having lived in Kenya, I was, I say, it's been like a breeze raising children. Mm-hmm. Um, I now have two children. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, um, skilled, um, skilled help is is available and accessible in in Kenya as you as you would know skilled um, skilled as in you know uh, nannies or um how homemakers or or mm. house home managers and okay. and cooks and cleaners and all that mm. they're they're you know they're specialist skills so mm. to have a to be able to afford a um a, a, a nanny to 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 look after the children while I was working and while both my husband and I were, um, and to have somebody to help around with the house so we didn't spend all our time cooking and cleaning. Hmm. That has been just, yeah. Um, it's made it's made having a, um, a career hmm. much more easier and, and healthier, actually. Hmm. Um, healthier in that we, you know, when we spend time with our children, we're we're spending time with them. We're not um, cooking, we're not cleaning, cleaning or cooking mm. or um, doing all the these other things um, that one needs to do um, in a in a household. Yeah, wow, I like that. Like I, I've never thought about it like that. Like having help helps you to spend the time that you have with your family. Like, mm-hmm actually spend it's, yeah. time with them yeah it's quality time yeah mm. you you you're you're there you're you're all there present you know with each other doing things together mm. um yeah mm, okay. so when when they grow get older of mm. course now that we're going to be moving to the uk it's um it'll be different mm. uh and they're much older they don't need that individual um attention uh well they need they need individual attention but they don't need as much um you know uh full-time supervision like a little child would Mm. um they're much more independent now and they can and they now are of the age that they can help out um Mm, with the household Mm. yep yeah yeah okay so we can have fun doing that together (laughs) yeah (laughs) It will be another way of spending time again. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is. I think it is, um, yeah, you can have fun. When I was growing up, we mm. we did that, you know, mm. we, I remember, have really fond memories of, believe it or not, washing up dishes and putting mm. them away after dinner. Or, fun. or helping, yes, yeah, we used to, because there were so many of us in the, oh, in the house and okay. the kids, and we used to, that would be our time together we would we would we would joke around with each other we would sing and we would dance and we would you know while we were doing all these chores mm. so they weren't they they felt like chores sometimes of course you know uh, when we were teenagers like we didn't want mm. to be we wanted to be moody but mm. um but most of the time the we didn't and we found it it was it was a time to to bond because otherwise you're at school and other, and when you're at home you're probably doing your homework and then you're in bed mm. so it was those times we'd, we'd get to hang, or hang out or hang around with each other and not be told off <laughs> for it <laughs> okay um so there's a point where you were talking about um your career path now you had 
you had had a consultancy with Isipe before you had two consultancy with, with Isipe and with Elri and you got a position at Elri, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So what happened to the Isipe one? I've just remembered that right now. So it was a <laughs> it was a um it was just it was a short term consultancy. So mm-hmm. I I left that to take up the 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 more full time okay. more long term position at Ilri. Mm. Um but um I think yeah that position was then swiftly take taken it, position at Isipe was taken over by another um very uh, qualified bioinformatician. Okay. Um there's also something else that you mentioned that uh, we were talking earlier way earlier about uh, the different career paths when it when it comes to bioinformatics pre PhD like without a PhD. Um and you mentioned that some of the boys that you know are in other career paths like in startups. Uh, do you want to talk more about that? I don't know if I have much to say about mm. apart from the fact that we we should um we should perhaps, you know, there should be when there are open days or when there's like career talks mm. um, for be for bio, in, aspiring bioinformaticians. Mm. Um, these these alternatives should be mentioned, and not just in bioinformatics, in mm. any science yeah, career. Mm. Yeah, any is this, as a scientist, like you, there isn't now any more just one pathway available. Mm. There are. Mm. If you yeah there there are many and just just look just look around look look wide and 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 look um all over the globe mm. people you know if i think traveling to different places is very very important with um as a scientist i, I mean as an individual in general like mm. it opens it makes Your you an mind. open-minded person mm. Um, but he, but as a scientist as well, you you know learn about different ways of doing things and mm. um, different op- you know different opportunities um, open up and yeah I, I think traveling if if even if yeah, even even if you're in your scientific career after PhD try and mm. find a postdoc elsewhere mm. or to another postdoc elsewhere you mm. know so you can can travel um, unfortunately I know that in in um, for many like that is not uh, really an option because there's there's family obligations and um location is is very um uh, sometimes is is restricted mm. um but if an opportunity does arise and there is a way to take your family then that would also you know um yeah would encourage that mm-hmm. So um, then you had stayed in Ilri for four years, right? Mm-hmm. After, like, uh, after Cambry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. In yeah. the scientist position, right? Yeah. So um, what made you switch? Like, what was that? What happened between there and moving to Nottingham? Oh, that was a domestic choice, Um for family, mm. uh, so yeah, we uh, we decided as a family that um, we wanted to to bring the children up in the UK. My husband is British, so mm. um, so he is he he had spent now two decades abroad, and he was. Um, well, it was yeah. We, we yeah for for the for the kids, you know, mm. to, for them to to feel um, to 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 feel a connection to their other um, side, their 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 nation, their their other nationality. Mm. Um, so you know, with kids, you have to you always have to. There's so many complications. Kids, kids bring up <laughs> bring in a lot of complications to life, mm. <laughs> but a lot of joy as well. Mm. Um, so you know you have to think about the years, the school years, and um, their age, and when would it be? When when is it good for them to? When are they flexible enough to move and mm. to assimilate into 
or adjust into a new society, school, yeah. a new way of doing things, and their school years, example, exactly. Mm. So all those, we had we had a window um, when they didn't want to do it too early, otherwise mm. bringing them up in the UK is difficult. As I as I explained, we wouldn't have all the luxuries mm-hmm. um, of help that we had in Kenya, so we mm. didn't want to do it too early, mm. and we don't want to leave it too late. Mm. Um, so otherwise it would it gets really um difficult for them to to um to adjust to a new new society and a new everything so 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 yeah that's kind of what what uh, prompted the the search so for me it was you know if i want to get a if i want to work in the uk which we would have to um mm. if we wanted to um um be financially mm. uh okay um then what what kind of skills do i need to start building mm. so i started looking around okay what jobs are being advertised what skills are they asking for mm. and now you know what do i have what do, what don't i have okay mm. so i have a list of things i don't have mm. let me start working on those Mm. to make me employable um when i want when i yeah when i when i need to apply oh so it was something that you had, you had been thinking about so yes. you had prepared yourself mentally and everything skill wise and all that that's a good uh, tip. skill wise sk- skill wise i'm still working on that mm-hmm. <laughs> you you're forever catching up you know with this mm. um <clears throat> in this field yeah uh but by the time you've you've learned something it's already a, it's already moved on and a new new tool or a new yeah. way of doing things have have emerged so mm. um but but mentally yes we have been discussing for years um and uh yeah with my husband and mm. it's been a to and fro you know discussion but eventually we agreed that this is what we wanted to do want to do as a family mm. just well the kids were not involved in the discussions of course but oh, wow. my husband and i <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a say yet <laughs> mm. yeah sorry for them no no they're too young they can't make informed decisions 